Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me on a very, very cold day here at Cambridge Car Audio where I have come out with the SLS AMG Black Series that's going to be getting an upgrade in the form of a very bespoke custom Audison sound system. Now you might remember when I bought this car earlier this year, I talked about how very few of the used cars on the market were specced with the upgraded factory sound system that you could get when you bought one from new. This meant I couldn't choose one, but I picked this car because of its history, but also because of the fact that I'd actually filmed it myself about six or seven years prior, albeit in a very different look. Obviously, as well as driving it an awful lot, I've been making the car completely my own, a permanent Schmimobile in the garage, from changing the paint color to Mystic Blue, giving it the silver wheels, doing the engine and exhaust upgrades with Rentec to the R1 package. But now we are here, and thanks to the guys at Cambridge Car Audio, we're going to be giving this car a proper sound system as well. And when I say that, something completely bespoke made for this using some of the Audison thesis components but we're going to have this video in two parts we've just arrived and I'm going to play the startup sound because it is freezing and sounded incredible in just a moment as it was unloaded but then we're going to be taking the car inside having a quick run through what's going to be done and then in this video in a few minutes for you guys I'm going to be coming back next week to show you parts of the process and some of the fabrication and what's going to go into installing a system which will stay very true to original without being over the top or too much in your face but significantly upgrading it along with features like having Android Auto instead of the fairly dodgy Bluetooth system that I've got for the audio at the moment and a host of other features as well so it's very cold let's see the car being unloaded and then get it inside The thunderous rumble of the 6.2 litre naturally aspirated V8 of the SLS AMG Black Series with the Rentec R1 package. A tight fit, a very wide car. Oh, it just looks so good. You know, every time I've been away from the SLS and I see it again, it is magnificent. And it sounds so raw. That grumble is just ferocious. All right, looking fantastic. We'll get it inside in a second. Into the workshop we go. A big thanks to Dump Barn for bringing it up from the storage. Dump Barn Logistics, a look at that color under their lighting. It will be parked in their YouTube corner in just a moment. But this car, by the way, is a bit of a model for what we're doing. Their demo car, a Mustang, which I'm gonna show you quickly. It has an Audison system installed in here. It has a mixture of discrete components. For example, the upgraded speakers, which fit in the doors and the likes, but also bespoke fabrication of the pillars with Alcantara with the tweeters that you have there and then if we come around towards the boot of the car have a look in here <laughs> that looks cool the custom setup you can see with the subs at the side as well now we're not going to be doing a full setup like this these are very expensive components but they do absolutely look the part that they have installed in there just close that for the moment so this is just going to be parked in there YouTube corner effectively, Cambridge Car Audio do have a channel, so do go check out some of their bespoke projects, for example, like the Testarossa, a full conversion to the Nissan 300ZX, and a few other bits and pieces that are around, and plenty more to come in the future. This is looking mega! With the car in place, doors up, and the gull wings looking as epic as ever, as does the Testarossa. Let me tell you a little bit about what's going to happen. We'll have a full update in just a minute or two, but this car is going to be getting an infotainment upgrade to Android Auto. When we see it, the central console will be stripped out, the seats will be removed, some of the bulkhead panels will be taken out to install new subs behind. We'll be getting new tweeters, new custom fabrication to the A-pillars to house the tweeters to bring the sound more into the car, as opposed to the regular covers, as you can see, mounted onto the dashboard. There'll be a lot going on underneath the skin. I'm a little bit anxious to see what it's going to look like, but I know it's in good hands here, and we'll be getting this full update very shortly. So for the time being, I shall head off, but I'll see you guys in a matter of seconds back here for an update. And welcome back, where things with this car are now a little bit different as you're about to see. We'll have a look at the insides of the car, then I will take you through all of the components that are going to be installed here at Cambridge Car Audio, and a few decisions I have to make, as well as what's going to be happening next with the fabrication. So come and have a look at the inside of the SLS Black Series. Like I said, just a little bit different to how we last saw it. The seats have been removed, the interior console has been removed as well, but have a look back here because the magic has started, some of the installation has already taken place, but basically the rear shelf has been taken out, the backboard as well. You can see all of the silver 
reflective insulation that's been installed, which is all to do with keeping and controlling the sound, the resonance that it creates. This section back here is going to have a new fabrication created to house the new subwoofers. There's also a lot of cabling that's already been installed. You can see the blue cabling running in parallel with the manufacturer's cabling to help keep it all tidy and neatly installed. Down at the base here, where we have, if I turn on a light very quickly, the grills. These have already been upgraded to the new mid-base system from Audison. Something I've just been learning that I didn't know before is that on the doors where you have these grills, they're actually complete blanking plates. There are no speakers inside here. Now the reason for this is when OEMs are creating cars, they actually install all of the speaker componentry, including the cables, for their absolute top spec system, even if the car isn't actually spec'd with that. So in the case of this, the car starts with six speakers, but it has all of the upgraded speakers, as I mentioned, for the Bang & Olufsen system when that's been fully installed. In the case of this though, what we have, you can see back here, these are the mid-range speakers from Audison that have actually already been fitted. They work using the original factory mounts. Of course, those sit behind some grills when all is finished. We'll have the amps as well. It will also be built ideally into the backboard, but that will be a work in progress as it's carried out. We'll have the thesis tweeters, the new subs. And in fact, let's come and take a look at all of these that we've got here. This is quite a set of equipment. The Audison thesis components, the subs, the four sets of speakers, so the tweeters, the mid-range, the mid-bass, and the subwoofers. But let's start with the amps, the trio of amps, as I mentioned. I've just been having a crash course in how all of this works, how these link up to the head unit. It starts with the AP 4.9, which is this one, which runs nine different channels. Of course, we're going to have the eight speakers inside the car. This then feeds into the second amp, the AP4, which is going to be used as a two-channel setup for the mid-bass. Then we've got the AP1, which goes to our two eight-inch subs with the 4.9 initially controlling the tweeters and the mid-range. To show you some of the components then, starting with the Audison Thesis tweeters, which come in a beautiful presentation, it has to be said, in the box. We've got two samples here, because I do need to make a decision whether to do these in the silver or in the black. These are going to sit on the A pillars. So as I mentioned before, typically the car would have some tweeters. Well, this car in fact has them just here. These are the original dashboard tweeters. That tiny little speaker, it could be taken out from the grill, which sat on the top of the dash. It's actually funny to think that we're upgrading from this to those. I think you don't need to be an audio expert to tell that that's going to be quite a step change in terms of the sound quality. But critically, these basically face straight upwards. And because they face upwards, you don't get the same sound as the new ones that are going to be installed in here. And you can see how this is all masked to take measurements, to plan out how this is going to work. And you'll see more about this exact process over on Cambridge Car Audio's channel themselves, but there'll be a new fabrication inside here that uses the existing port area basically to house the new tweeters up front. So if we come back, the reason I'm undecided about the colours is because we do have some silver controls inside around the console uh, and the shift paddles, for example, but all of the other internal areas are carbon fibre or the air conditioning vents are also in black as well. But this is, this is quite the part. So we move on from the tweeters to the mid-range. We've got the Voce here. We have a few different steps from Audison. Thesis are their absolute flagship components. Voce is the next step, so to speak. And then you have Prima. After the two mid-range speakers, the Voce speakers in this case, that are already installed as we saw earlier using the factory brackets on the B pillars, the speakers that are closest to the seats. The next pair we have are the Audison Thesis mid-bass. Now you might be wondering about the different mix of components. We've got Thesis for the mid-bass and for the tweeters because fundamentally those are the main sound levels that you hear. They're supported by the Voce mid-range and you could upgrade those as well to Audison Thesis, but it's a very small change and this is the overall package that we've gone for. These are very nice looking components, the mid-bass speakers, which again, like I said, have already been installed. Those are down in the footwells behind the OEM grills. You could change that to have them behind Audison grills or some custom grills, but we're keeping it looking OEM down there at the moment. Then. For the last two speakers running on the same channel, we have the subwoofers, which in this case are the Prima 8-inch subs, a pair of them running through the third amp on the same channel. 
Now you might be wondering why not a 10 inch or maybe a 12 inch sub? Well, that's for two reasons mainly. The firstly, it's a supercar, it's a very small cabin. There's not a lot of space to work with overall, but there's also not necessarily the biggest need for the airflow to be moving around. And secondly, it's the packaging constraints of the back of this car in terms of installing them both in the amount of space that's actually available without having to get too crazy. And that's why you can see all of the shielding that's been installed to help with the resonance when those are actually installed. And it's a whole process to create custom fabric and boxes for the subs. We'll see some of that, but obviously much more on CCA's channel as well. If I come through over here and show you some of the internal components, one other factor to this is the installation of the Android Auto and Apple CarPlay system. Now we have the car's standard screen, which is of course still in the car at the moment, but to support our additional controls, we have to have a controller. Now I was trying to work out where exactly this could go for a very neat installation. Obviously this is a little bit awkward, so what we've decided to do is to install it effectively in here in the armrest, which can either be covered up, but normally you have it open because that's where you have the cup holders and tend to store some bits and pieces. That's a whole installation in its own right because it's supplementary to the original system that the car has um, in terms of basically all of the controls. You have a switch to go between the two. It has to have a whole load of componentry installed and actually a much bigger deal than I realized when I first asked them if we could actually do this. So a big thanks to the team here for working on that. I think we're gonna see some though of how all of this comes together. I've been watching a little bit and learning a lot about this, but we'll have a quick, I guess, looks, look at the next steps before I'll be back to see it completed, hopefully in not all that long. I would also like to say thank you to motorsports artist Martin Tomlinson who put together this painting of the SLS Black Series. He actually did this back when the car itself was silver before it was even painted blue. But I first became aware of Martin's work because he was responsible for the headliner image on the Aston Martin DBS 59, the special commemorative image that I actually got to see before. Always very impressive. He reached out and has put this together, which will of course be hanging in the Schmuseum. I cannot wait to put this up in the corner for the SLS Black Series when the time comes. I have been learning a lot about how this installation goes very, very quickly. Now, Ardil from Cambridge Car Audio will share a lot of the behind the scenes over on their channel. But at the moment, the fabrication of the A-pillars is taking place, as well as in the workshop, the parts that will be used for the installation of the subs in the rear shelf. But let me show you a little bit of how this goes. So inside at the A-pillars, at the bases of the A-pillars, they are currently fitting some fiberglass, which has the resin that is drying at the moment using the original speaker positions. But to work out exactly where to put the new tweeters, they have their own in-house made device, which is 3D printed in the same shapes as the Audison Thesis tweeters themselves, with the rings around the outside, one of which you can see here, which are used to direct and guide the position, the aim of it. So for example, here with a laser, they position this to work out the exact audio profile that they want to have and where these will need to be placed to get that. Now you could choose to have both the ones on each side pointed at the driver, for example. I'm gonna have them pointed evenly because quite often I find myself in the passenger seat, but fascinating to see the attention to detail that has to go into every part of this. In this case, to get those right, you can hear the templates being made at the moment for the sub boxes. Now, one interesting thing about this area is that the shelf actually sits, as you can see, at this higher level, which means that that entire space beneath it is empty, it's vacant. Normally you would, if you ordered the upgrade system from factory, it would take up some of that space, but otherwise it's just insulation and foam. But it gives a perfect opportunity to install the subs on each side, to not have to move any of the wiring looms, and to be able to have the sound profile, which has been adjusted. So the subs will face upwards towards the glass, which actually directs the sound into the car, but they'll still adjust the profile later on at the very end of the process from all of the speakers to set it up entirely in a bespoke way for this car. I have learned a lot very, very quickly about how all of this works. Bizarre to see the car looking like this at the moment, but it's amazing to learn everything that goes into it. And like I say, Ardil will take you guys through a lot more of that if you'd like to see it over on Cambridge Car Audio's channel behind the scenes when the time comes and some of their other projects as well and how it all works out. For the Android Auto, they'll also need to install I think a new microphone that will go up top too, as well as some other parts that will sit behind the head unit. The amps will sit back here between the two sub boxes in the central space, but there is a lot into this and well, it just looks cool to be honest. I love seeing and learning more about how cars work behind the scenes. For the time being though, I'm gonna be heading off, leaving the car in their safe hands to have 
all of these parts installed to have the full Audison sound system installed here at Cambridge Car Audio and I cannot wait to hear what the result is going to be like. For now though, I will leave it there be back before too long of course this process does take probably up towards a month that kind of thing to get everything fully fitted up and to make all of the bespoke parts that go into it and do the configuration but a big thanks to the team awesome i can't wait thank you as well to you guys for watching that's it for this time and i'll see you again very soon cheers